happy camel owner or simply an adoring camel fan, you're in the right place for some fun, useful and interesting camel talk. This is the Camel Connection Podcast. We're your hosts, I'm Tara. And I'm Russell. Join us here for fun learning about camels, how to care for, train and handle them, plus insider stories and interviews. And also some interesting stories of our lifestyle with camels, the good, the bad, the ugly and the very funny. Make sure you've subscribed now so you don't miss out on an episode. podcasts are an audio take of our video so be sure to check those out on our blog for lots of how-to visuals and of course lots of camels this is your one and only go-to podcast all about camels welcome back to the camel connection podcast it's Tara here. Hi, Tara, and happy birthday for yesterday. Well, actually, by the time this comes out, it would be yesterday. a week later, maybe. Well, happy birthday for last week, but okay. really, that's a week in the future. Yeah, and it's yesterday. It's, yeah, okay. Because all this is pre recorded, in case if you didn't know. Yeah, well, it's actually pre recorded so that you guys always have your camel content. That's right. And, uh, you know, it's. Running a business like this, um, I mean, thank goodness, you know, Tara's up with the, all the technical stuff, because I sure aren't. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're able to do this podcast and give you information, and uh, and that's what we're all about, is giving you information. Um, but we, it doesn't have to be on the spot. And so, you know, if we, um, we've got other things to do, like... <laughs> run a family, um, take kids to school, all the normal things that everyone does. But at the same time, you know, we're able to share this information with you via the technology. I think it's wonderful. Well, I think the main point is, is that it's constant content for you guys that you get to learn about camels constantly for, you know, however many weeks are in the year sort of thing. We'll take a couple of weeks off at the end of the year. Um, but that's it, you know. Otherwise, we're just pumping it out there to you guys so that you keep well informed and also um, you keep your interest Absolutely. Alive. And, you know, one thing that um, I've always wanted to do this and I'm going to do it right now is ask you, ask you to give us suggestions of our podcasts okay give us some ideas that you know we can share and uh and that way you know we've got a two-way street of communication happening and that you know we're we're, you know answering your questions to the best of our ability and if we don't know an answer which you know hey no one knows everything and uh i know that uh there's one person i can't remember who it was now but uh, it said that uh you know no one's born with this information and, uh, well, I'm sure a lot of people have said that. Well, they probably have. Yeah, absolutely. I know that for a fact. And uh, and but you know, our goal is to, if we don't know the answer, then we'll attempt to find out for you. So yeah, give us suggestions as to what it is that you want to talk about. And you can do that by wherever you're listening. You can type it in the comments, or you can email us at hello at camelconnection dot com. And just let Hello us... Connection. Say that again. Hello at camelconnection.com. I like that. That's our email address. I know, I know, but I really like it. Because, I mean... It <laughs> Obviously, be... you don't email us very I often. D- well, I don't. <laughs> Why would I email myself? <laughs> anyway, today's topic, um, this one's a beauty, okay? So, for those who have, you know, got a fresh new camel or green camel or, or even one that you've been working with... Um, I'm sure you'll get something out of today's um, podcast. And it's titled, How to Plan a Camel Training Session. Yeah. All right. Good planning. Good and it's planning. important because, I mean, a lot of people, um, I, I would say one of the big, biggest mistakes when they go into, um, to actually, I'll tell a little story with this because I was looking through um I can't remember its exact title, but the Camel Compodium or Compodium for Camels mm-hmm. or whatever it's called. And um, I came across, I was looking through the index because, um, you know, I was just looking up some illnesses and things like that. And I came across Camel Chain. I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. I wonder what I'll read here. And it was, it was very vague. 
um, you know, like it, it, it said the basics on what to do, but it like it missed a whole bunch of the middle content, like, you know, you tie your camel up and then you put a pack on it, you know, like, so it missed the, whole, the, whole, section, the yeah. whole middle section, basically. Mm-hmm. But one thing that it did... Um, did did mention that what brought to my attention is the fact that it didn't like there was no um lead up to the preparation for the camel training mm-hmm. um and there was no there there was no middle content which would send people very confused so people naturally could read that and go okay well i'm going to dedicate the next hour to my camel mm-hmm and they do that and the camel's fresh or, you know, you know, still young in the head or whatever and they find out that that hour they don't get very far at all. And I could, re- just by reading that content in this compodium, I'm thinking that could be really disheartening for a new camel owner oh, yeah. is they go in, this book has laid it out that it's so easy to do and that you just, you know, all camels are the same basically. Yeah. And you go in and you spend a couple of hours or an hour or whatever and you're like, well, I did not get very far with that. I'm a failure. I'm a shitty camel owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. T- but we've all been there, but trust me. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I think the topic of, you know, how to plan a camel training session, it is so important to plan it because if you don't plan it um, and mainly set a whole day aside, which we're going to go through the points shortly, um, then, yeah, it's kind of, you know, you kind of setting. You don't want to set yourself up or your camel set yourselves up for failure. Absolutely, and you actually said a really good point there. Um, in, in amongst all that was um, that uh, no camels are the same. Uh, you know, that was basically the message uh, that I got from something you said there. Mm. Um, and and you know, like some camels will pick up things really quickly. And just be absolutely. They'll be their textbook camel. Textbook camel, yeah. you know, uh, whatever that might be. Well, yeah, camel uh, compodium camel. Yeah, <laughs> camel compodium camel. Um, but then there's also, you know, like, I mean, just like people, you know, we're all so, so different. And one thing that I've been studying recently, um, you know, sort of on the lines of, okay, well, how can I better myself in my communication with the animals so i've been doing a bit of research into the energy of atoms mm-hmm. okay um and there's the negative en- a negative charge if you like inside the atom and swirling around on the outside is the positive and all of this collectively in the, the cells of your body creates an enormous amount of electricity mm-hmm. all right and within that, then it came to waves of energy and all that sort of stuff and what sort of energy that you actually portray to other people and blah, 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 mm-hmm. right? It's all very in-depth and that's not... And good. animals are definitely... They, they, you can't hide from them. You can't hide your, your emotions or feelings or... Energy. Uh, they see energy. They see right through the skin, they the outside. They sure do. And... And uh, look, I'm not going to go into you know the the stuff that I studied there um, and did the research, but uh, it was really interesting stuff, and uh, and that actually leads to the very first point of what we've got planned for this topic of how to plan a camel training session, and that is mental attitude. Hmm. Yeah, you know, your mental attitude. Now, if if for example Tara and I have been having a fight. About, you know, does something. that ever happen? <laughs> oh, <laughs> of course it does. We're quite human. Um, um, yeah, and, uh, you know, there is no point whatsoever in me going out to the yards with any fresh green camels um, while I'm still fuming and steaming. Oh, and we've done that, and guess what? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all, you know. It just makes it worse. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, one thing that the camel's really good at, if I am fuming and steaming because of a, a, you know, a bit of a tiff that we're having, um, is standing there and I gain their energy, uh, mm. you know, gain their sort of feels and emotions or whatever. I think also camels hate ego. And then when you, you're trying to suppress feelings um, or, or a lot of those feelings are coming out because of ego, they will really put their guards up. That's what I've noticed. Absolutely. And, and you know, ego basically comes from fear. Exactly. Uh, you know, and, uh, and but yeah, if you're planning your, your camel training session, just make sure that you're 
your mental attitude is really good. You know, you mm. you want to be with that animal, but you don't want to invade their space. Mm-hmm. No one likes that. Mm. Uh, just have a look at the recently before the Australian elections, Bill Shorten. Uh, the leader of the opposition at the time, he uh, he actually told the prime minister that he was a classic space invader. That was that was actually recorded on um, on video at, at uh, some that's funny some uh, conference over at, but um, yeah, and and people don't like that, you know. So you've got to sort of read that animal really carefully as well. And, mm. um, and, and often when you go in, if you go into a camel training session and your mental your mental state is elsewhere, the camels will be the one teaching you the lesson. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. And that might be <laughs> in what appears to be a negative way. Oh, totally. Yeah. And look, you know, it's sort of a matter of being like the camel in that respect. You know, Do you know just being in the in presence at the moment, for the moment, you know, not in the past, not in the future, but just at that moment with that animal. Do you know, it really reminds me of when we trek with the camels and we're with them 24-7, and, you know, life still happens and, you know, whatever's happening around you is happening. But I think that's probably what I enjoy the most about it is that you mentally need to try and put yourself in a good space and even admit to the camels when you're not in a good mood. It's like, you know, Jack, I'm not in a good mood today. <laughs> just so you know. And Jack will just be oblivious to the whole thing. Mm. Um, or Or sometimes also I've noticed, like, if you're angry in in an angry egotistic way, they will generally um, be, misbehave, you know, oh. during a trek. But if you are sad, like angry in a sad way, I notice they really kind of mellow, like they're there as your mate, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, which is really interesting for camel, the psychology of camels alone. So it really is this egotistic based thing where you're angry and you're not gonna you know open yourself up to to better things happening or whatever it is and then you've got that sad the sadness which they aren't they seem to understand um but you don't get that same misbehaving effect if there's more ego involved. well let's boil it down to the very fact that you are building a bond and a trust and uh and also a relationship Mm. uh, and uh you are connecting with that um with that animal as a human in different skin mm. um that's what i believe anyway um it's just also the communication is quite different mm. and uh and you know but we are still spirit beings so it doesn't matter you know they, they still exist within themselves but uh they, what, what <laughs> i'm are, loving this conversation we're getting real deep but oh, that was add on adams and now yeah. i mean but this is what it's about i mean you know and if there's this is boring the crap out of you and you're like oh you guys it's just an animal then it's probably not the right place for you mm. because you know we're all about that camel connection and um you know finding out who we are through the process of finding out who the camel is and that's what we're about yeah, for so. sure. I mean, you know, I mean, most of us, I mean, you know, we're in that position as well, you know. We're not able to readily get camels and say, oh, I like that one, I'll keep that one, I'll get rid of that one or whatever, you mm. know. We're in that position where we've got to be very careful as to what camel we select yes. for our herd. Um, it's like selecting a friend, you know. Yeah. <laughs> not that you um, select friends, but, you know. We don't have a know. great deal of land or anything like that. And, um, you know, the camels that we do... Um, end up having on our property. Of course, we fall in love with them, regardless of their personality types. Mm-hmm. And uh, even if you know, there's a, recently I had a conversation with someone who um, has a camel that's very scared, and it, it seems like um, no matter what uh, uh, that this person is able to do with that camel, that, that this camel is continuously being scared. Mm. And uh, and so I just simply suggested, you know, look, how about you go and do the process again from step one, you know, spend that time with the camel. And that's the biggest point people forget, I feel, is yeah. that that they keep so you know you've got to a certain part and then they for 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 weeks and weeks and months even years they keep trying from that that spot that they got up to. But the easiest and quickest way is to go back to the start. Just go back to the start. And pretend that do it's it a fresh new again. camel. Yeah, do it all again and uh, spend that time just, spend, you know, gently, gently. Get some success. Uh, leave on a high note, okay? And that's that's what I suggested to this person. And turn the camel out. And, you know, it could be a personality clash too. Well, maybe. But, but that's um, something only the owner can decipher. That's right. Yeah. But by turning the camel out, especially after a success... 
then uh, you know the mental attitude is comes back into it. Okay, you've had the success. The camel's had the success. The camel goes off, you know, into the paddock for six months, a year, whatever it might be, and then when you bring it back, they're a little bit more mature. But they've ha- the last thing that they remember of the contact with you is that success. And it's this beautiful lineage, I suppose, or, or cycle of you're going to learn your biggest lessons through that animal. Yeah. You know, yeah. biggest cameleering lessons, I should say. I mean, the camels that I've not got along with and then all of a sudden something switched in me more so than them, um, I got my biggest lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Should we go on to the next one? Yeah, well, I mean, we're sort of leaning towards that because by turning that camel out, well, we're talking about time. All right, so when you're planning a camel training session, plan the time to do it, Mm. okay? It's no point saying, oh, I've got half an hour, I'll do something now, and then you're almost towards that point of success, okay, of achieving a little goal Mm. uh, between you and the camel. And, and like then you said, all of a sudden you've got to pull away and the camel's just confused. And some, like you said before, some camels will get it really easy and other camels will take a bit more time to get it. That's it. And um, so I, I always say to people, just put aside a whole day. If you're yeah. going to train your camel and reinforce training or whatever for that day, yeah. then put aside the day. Oh, totally. If it happens in an hour, whatever you want, that leave on that success note, then that's fine. Yeah. You've got the rest of the day to yourself. But, you know, if it takes all day, which I we've had clients that it has taken them all day yeah. just to get their camel to sit, mm-hmm. they're persistently... Um, and Why gentle yeah, and you know, I remember thinking of one client, Rodney in particular, who mm. called me. <laughs> it's about seven o'clock at night. It's like <gasps> I spent all day, no, literally all day. <laughs> but trying the lessons to get... he learned from that, yeah, both, both him and both the camel. Him and the camel, but uh, the lessons that they learned was just enormous. And uh... I think he started at eight, and then the camel finally eight a.m. and the camel finally sat at six. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Uh, I was like impressed. I'm yeah, like, that's dude, pretty you're amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Not everyone has that kind of stickability. It wasn't that camels day. No. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, but uh, yeah. So you know, make sure that you've got you know some food um, for yourself. For yeah. yourself, yeah. Water. Yeah, have some food, water, um, shade, a good book. Because um, part of the program, you know, as you know, is just simply standing there in the presence of the camel, not asking the camel. To well, do those anything. that have been through our courses know that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, if you've been through our course, then you'll understand what we're talking about. And if about. you haven't, you can always do the online course because that goes through all of that. That's it. That's it. So, yeah, time is time is have that planned time, okay? But whatever you do, um, make sure that you leave the day's session on a high note, on a success, all right? And l- let the camel know that that was good, all right? Let, tell the camel, you know, good boy, good boy, yes, that's exactly what I'm after. Thank you very much, you know? And, uh, and leave, leave the day with that success. That's really important. Um, the next pointer and how to plan a camel training session, okay, the thing that you really need to make sure that you've got is your equipment. Yeah. yeah, equipment. You need equipment. <laughs> so shall we go through what, I mean, you know, if this is a camel that, I mean, you know, obviously it can go right up to the saddling procedure, but if it's a camel, yeah. you don't really need that much. No. You know, if it's a camel that's newly, um, you know, young and, you know, has never accepted a saddle before and your goal today is just to reinforce um, the sitting process because, you know, a camel that can't sit or doesn't sit, you know, is kind of useless if you want to ride or saddle or whatever. Um, so um, getting to that process, you you want a, you know, if you're just reinforcing the sitting, you just want a halter basically. And, mm. um, you know, the other, any other equipment that we mentioned in our online training course, um as an additional reinforcement. I mean, some of you listening have been through our courses, so you know what we're talking about when we see other equipment. Um, but those of you who possibly haven't been through our training and have your own systems in place or no systems, um, then definitely check out our online course, um, which is the Camel Connection Trust Based mm-hmm. Camel Training, because mm-hmm. that will take you through the basics on what you need to get started. But yeah. I mean, ultimately, you re- what all, the only thing that we use is a halter and rope. Well, also to make sure that um, 
you know, no matter what you do with the camels, okay, whether or not the the fully trained, you know, tracking, working, riding, wagon type camels, it doesn't matter what it is that you're doing, uh, but you've always got a pocket knife on your hip. Yes. All right, number one, because if things do happen, the camels take spook and get caught up in ropes or, you know, the lead ropes or whatever it might be, okay, um, that you've got a good sharp knife on you, that you can just click open and cut cut a rope if need be. All yeah. Right? Uh, it, it, look, it happens. Um, nothing's perfect in the world. You know, camels might get spooked, like I said. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's a good little tool to have. anything else about it, but that's how you deal with it. That's mm. the important part. All right, so ropes. Yeah, definitely your ropes. Yeah. Um, halters. Um, we recommend, obviously, the rope halter. I think we've been through this in another podcast, but the rope halter... Um, acts as a more um, pressure pointed, uh, pressure pointed, you know, tool. I suppose you could say compared to like yep. the flat, the flat head stalls, yep. um, the flat nylon ones. Yep. And um, the rope we use obviously is very strong. It can, I think its total weight capacity is like I don't know three thousand two hundred kilograms or something like that. It's, yeah, it's a fair whack. What? We're not actually using that. Well, we do to tie them up. Well, yeah, we do to tie yeah. them up. But the whole thing about, um, and this is pointed out in the course as well, um, the, the whole thing about that is that the rope is a bluff. We bluff the camels into that rope. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go into it now, but um, uh, basically when you're walking with your big, strong camel, I mean, that's exactly what they are. They are a big, strong camel. And, and they know, could get away from you if they really wanted to. They could right. get off a pole if they really right. wanted to. And so one of those things is bluffing the camels into that rope. Mm. Uh, they actually think that they can't get away we from We talked a lot about that in the last um, live round we did of the virtual camel school. Yeah, we did. And um, we talked about a lot of things, actually, um, which yeah. was just so helpful to a lot of you guys that took mm. part in that. So thank you for being such great oh, community members. Oh, thanks for the member. feedback too, guys. Yeah, yeah we yeah. appreciate that. Um, so if you if you do want access to that virtual camel school that we did, it won't be a live access, obviously, but you will get access to all the live recordings that we did. So not only the course, the um, Camel Connection Trust-based camel training course, but then you get the associated live videos with the week by week, So, yeah. um, which people found very helpful because yeah. it's one thing to do a course, but then to go elaborate on that course on, Absolutely. You know, and adjust it to certain camel personalities and all that stuff was really helpful. So Absolutely. you can go get that over at camelconnection.com forward slash camel school if you're interested in that. We'd love to have you as part of this of our community yeah no, and absolutely. shall we get on to the next point yeah well i would just go back to the uh, equipment it all depends on what stage you're up to with your training with your camel i mean obviously from the very beginning it's just rope holders and um, um you know your pocket knife mm. um and uh, you might even uh, you know as you're getting towards the saddle stage and you know blankets pads the saddle itself you know bags you know other blankets and, uh, whatever it might be okay and that uh, that's you know just part individual yeah yeah it depends what you're up to with your with your training there um i think the most important thing though the most important thing in training your camel or having a planned training session is structure mm. structure to your training session now it's so important because if you switch it around and switch it up the camel's just going to get confused that's exactly it you know it needs to be step by step i mean it's like how we learn and the reason why we learn the way that we do and i think that sometimes why um like for instance just going back to this camel compodium thing like you know you've read something you're going to do the steps you've tried for an hour okay that hasn't worked i'm going to try something different mm. you know something else joe blow told me sort of thing i'm going to try that Oh, that didn't work for an hour either. So I'm going to try what Mary over here said. And I'll try that for an hour. Oh, that didn't work. And then suddenly you've got this very confused camel. Yeah. You're confused because you don't know where to go next. Yeah. And there's no structure and systems in place. And camels love yeah. structure. They love routine. They love to know what to expect um, exactly of you, right. basically. And the step-by-step, -step, um, you know, little successes... All right, build up to a big success. Mm. All right, and exactly going back to how we learn, and I know that from having you know the education background um, of teaching and lecturing, is that you don't launch into Pythagoras' theorems 
Um, no idea what in, that in, uh, <laughs> uh, You know, when the kids are at uh, kindergarten. Yeah. Uh, what's the point? Yeah. Uh, they, they don't even know they're one plus twos. Yeah. Uh, the gazintas. And it would only set them up. <laughs> I love that, the gazintas. It would only set them up for feeling like they're failures, mm. you know, because they don't know or understand. Camels are the same. Mm. Camels are exactly the same. They need structure, mm. okay, in their training and learning process. And, uh, and I think that, you know, as we continuously review and modify um, our course and, um, and uh, the way that uh, we're, you know, putting out, out the information, um, keeping in mind all the time, you know, what is the structure um, that camels on the whole can go ahead and accept? Mm. Uh, what's, what, what is that structure? And you tweak that to their individual personality. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a framework. And I think we've got that fairly well done. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what we teach in our live courses and on our on in our virtual camel school is that um this is the structure this mm. is the foundations that you work off and you tweak it to the individual personality of the camels um yeah. that you're working with and it just freaking works every yeah. time yeah it has never failed us no, it hasn't and you know some camels pick it up real fast and yeah. some camels just need more time yeah and like i said to this uh to this friend of ours who uh, you know has got this camel that just doesn't seem as though it gets it, you know, get to a certain point of success and turn the camel out. Give it some think time, you know. And I, I, I know I was really surprised um, um, when I was first starting um, training camels and um, my mentor uh, said, you know, turn it out for a year. It'll come back better. Now, I didn't believe that. I honestly did not believe that. Um, but did that. Um, set of circumstances, that's how it was. Um, I had no choice, really. Um, but, of course, when we got the camels back, back into the yard, 15 minutes later, after they'd calmed down and, you know, sort of, you know, relaxed a bit and put the halter on and then put the rope on and, you know, and they were. They were exactly where they were, where we left off, if not better. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and it's always been that case. I, I And I case. even noticed too, and, and do feel like if you're a camel owner and you are, you know, the handler and trainer <laughs> and that it, it's okay to have long breaks in between training sessions, mm. you know, like mm. you might do one, you know, a couple of days in a row and then have a whole, the rest of the month not do anything. Yeah. I've noticed that with some of that because we use our own camels here, our young camels, and take them through our level one and level two time and time and time again. And they do get better and better and better, but we come up to different um, challenges each time, yeah. you know, and but we do we do see that progress that these camels make. Yeah. Um, so everybody learns um, from that. The the participants, the the students that come and learn. Yeah, I think uh, the problem, main problem that we have with uh, even thinking along those lines of turning camels out, is the problem's actually with us, uh, us humans, because we want results. You know, we've got an idea in our mind, okay? Let's just give an example. Buy a camel, a couple of camels, whatever. We want to start a riding operation. We want that riding operation up and running in three months' time. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> Something along those lines, okay? I'm just giving you yeah, a made-up example. But, I mean, you know, it might be true. Um, but we want results. And... You know, we are a results-based society, let's well, face it. that's right. And, uh, we can and get yet, anything at an instant. Here's these animals that uh, have come, you know, they're green uh, or feral um, or hand-raised or whatever it might be, but untrained, mm. okay? Um, and we want results. Mm. And we want to be able to utilise that animal and, you know, to for whatever purpose it is that we've, you know, got the camels in the first place. Mm. All right, now... I'm not really talking to the people that want, you know, a nice camel standing out in the paddock um, as a paddock ornament, you know, and, or, you know, how else can I say, a friend, um, but someone that wants to use the camel, you know, for a commercial purpose even, and we want it for a result. And we are the ones that have the trouble. And there's no such thing as a quick fix. No. I mean, there are foundations and I must admit that our process does work quickly and we can have a, tra- can, you know, a fairly untamed or, a, for better of a word, wild camel. Oh, feral. Feral, or wild, green. you know, 
bucking, kicking, biting, whatever, <laughs> uh, we can have them, you know, sitting and leading in a matter of three days yeah. and even shorter if we really were to, you know, that's, that's with participants, of course. Yeah. Um, but in a shorter period of time, if it was just us getting in there, getting the job done. Yeah. Um, but one thing I, I learned from training horses many, many years ago was that I would constantly have clients. And you know why? Because I was the problem fixer. But because I was the problem fixer and the, cam- the camels, the horses w- would go back to their owners. The owners would be doing the same thing that they've always done and then I'd see that horse in another two or three months. Right. And I see this in the camel world too is that camels, will ha- there will be a fixer come in, you know, a camel trainer and, you know, great, you know, got results. But then in the next few months it's happening all over again right. or, or differently or some other challenge has come up. So I suppose it's, it's really well, good. Well, that's happened with us too. Yeah. yeah, and it's good to think of that it's a, it's a process, you know. There's no such thing as a quick fix. In fact, camels work better when they've got a relationship to rely on consistently mm. in if they've got a consistent handler, if they've got a consistent trainer. Yeah. Um, that is what we've noticed in, in our, um, within amongst our clients and students is that the camels function better when they've got that consistency. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if it gets mixed up and, you know, there's three, this four different chain, yeah, it, that, it gets yeah. confusing it for does. the camel, of course. So. And for the owner. I mean, you know, I do too. Mm. You know, definitely. Mm. But in saying that, I mean, you know, like the progressive steps, and this is actually the next point, the progressive steps. If you if you get your mindset right uh, in saying that uh, the turnout, turning the camel out after, you know, the initial training session or the training sessions or the course or whatever it might be, uh, but turning them out is actually a step, mm. um, a progressive step. Even if it's for a month or two. Yeah. yeah. Then you get on to my last point, uh, which is reward. Mm. Mm. Uh, the reward okay now can i just quickly go back to the the yeah. turning out because you can yeah. make it work for you with the seasons like for oh, instance yeah. in the states you're not going to want to get out there in the snow no. and train your camels no. so their turnout period could be the winter time Absolutely. and then the training commences in the summer which yeah. happens to be when we do virtual camel school online because we try to you know it's the end of our summer but you know still nice weather so we're still working with the animal and then winter comes and you're like yeah, yeah i don't really feel like going out there in the cold and of course camels work better when it's hot um or they're more relaxed when it's hot but when they're cold they can definitely be more edgy so yeah especially yeah. a windy day cold wind mm. yeah, so snow, you sleep. can work with the seasons that's totally cool and yeah fun. no for sure but the rewards also i mean you know our attitude uh how we um you know praise the camel that's all we use mm. right? we don't use treats um we might feed them at the end of a, a session, and you can class that as a reward. Um, you know, give them a, give them a good bucket of hay or chaff or something. I like just that. see that as a basic camel, right? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> okay, right, whatever. Um, but uh, you know, the reward is definitely in how we present ourselves. You know, saying "Good boy, good girl, well done," you know, mm. and all that sort of thing. Let them know. You know, from a verbal point of view, a verbal way. Uh, it reminds me again of when we go trekking and we trek, you know, we the camels feed out in the morning, they're hobbled and they have a feed and then we collect them for saddling and then they know because they're in, in the routine. But you always, when the young ones come in, they don't know what's going on. So they'll misbehave during the day a uh, little bit until they realise that they get fed every single night and every single morning and then they'll get into the groove of it all. That's right. So, um, yeah, that's... They that's obviously their reward and they look forward to it and they know that it's coming. That's right. I want to give everyone a little tip. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, this is this is not on the um, on the program for today, but uh, I just want to give everyone a little tip. And I suppose actually it is part of the program. Anyway. On the program, it's uh, not well, like you're in, you you're reading a script. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. No. Um, okay. One of the best things that you'll ever do with your camel, ever. Okay, it's set this out for a day. Okay, have a little backpack on, you know, with your food and water, etc. Uh, put your halter on, not you, obviously, or the camel. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> put the camel's halter on with the lead rope. If you're up to this stage, okay, and take your camel for a, not a walk, but an amble. All right, take your camel for an amble somewhere 
Um, yeah, well, obviously, if you've got two camels or three camels, then uh, you know keep them as a herd mm. so that uh, you know you've got a couple of people with you. Mm. Um, but take them for an amble and let them have an eat. Mm. All right, stay in front of your camel um, so that you've always got control, but let them choose where they go. Obviously, if they're going to pull away from you, then pull them back into line so that they're always you're always in control. As a camel owner, you soon learn what plants they like to eat. Yeah. So you actually direct them towards the plants. Yeah, yeah. But rather than letting let them pull you. them sort of have the majority of the choice. Mm. Okay, and just be in presence with them, with the, with the rope, and spend the day doing this. And have a nice lengthy rope too. Uh, if they want to sit down, sit down with them in front of them, uh, mm. with, the, with their rope, uh, your lead rope. All right, but spend that time with your camel. And I'm just thinking about that friend that rang uh, about the scared camel, and uh, and that's another thing that can be done, all right, with a camel like that. Um, you know, to spend the time with your animal, let them get used to you, let them, you know, ha- create that bond. Mm. Uh-huh. That's a little tip. Just a little tip for today. Yeah, yeah. Work with the personalities for yeah. sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that's all I have. Great, thank you. Um, That's um, really good. I, I I know you guys can um, go ahead and schedule your own training session next. I know you guys in the states at this time of the year. What is it? June, almost June. Yeah, June. That you know, it's coming into summer for you guys. So mm. this is the time that you schedule your training sessions in and get to work, and then you can have that break over the winter. Yeah. And for us um, on the other side of the world, in Australia, it's coming into winter, but it really depends where you're located because it's not kind of winter everywhere. Right. Um, it's still hot in a lot of parts, but you know, work with the seasons and and tr- plan your sessions. Um, you know, take the tips that we've got of you today. If you haven't been through our Camel Connection Trust Based Camel Training course online, do it. You know, yeah. like it is time that you you step yourself in structure. and get some yeah. structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so you can yeah. get that again over Camel at you can get that over at CamelConnection dot com forward slash camel school so not only will you get the course structure but you also get those recorded live videos that we did back at the start of this year that everyone just raved about because we talked elaborated more on camel personalities we answered people's questions which not only helped that person but a lot of other people so i think you'll find a lot of value from that absolutely and give us some suggestions of uh, what what you want in the podcast yeah, uh, if you've got one, do. just email us or yep, comment please. wherever you're at. Now, before we go, we do need to let you know that our applications for our Mongolian camel journey, you've probably heard about it um, because we've just been plugging it like crazy. We've had lots of applications, yeah. but applications do close, I think, on the 10th of June. Mm. So you've only got a few days left to apply. So if you've been considering it, um, take a look at it again. Um, we're going to ra- run the ad shortly after this, but I do want to let you know that applications close in a few days. So yeah. get in while you can. Yep, too right. That's going to be a cracker. It's I mean, a really, really good one. It's going to be a good Can't one. Can't say cracker because different countries means different things. Yeah, people are getting <laughs> used to it. Yeah, that's it. Hey, Aussie slang. Good on us. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, good guys. We'll see you on the next one. Right, I'll catch you. Bye. Bye. Hey there, we're looking for eight adventurous people to join us as a team in the Mongolian Altai Mountains, home of the famous eagle hunters. In September of 2019, we'll be buying, training and gifting eight Batram camels to a local nomadic family and we're inviting you to be part of this unique experience. When we travel international, we like to get a taste of what it's really like to live like the locals. For our trip to Mongolia this year, this means living with a nomadic family, far away from cities, sleeping in traditional Mongolian gurs, learning local customs, bonding and sharing our cultures. Our 2019 Mongolian Camel Journey is for the open-hearted and minded individuals who are willing to be flexible and to expect the unexpected. We'll be spending five days training at eight Bactrim Camels using our Camel Connection Trust-Based Camel Training in preparation for our camel trek to a local camel and eagle festival and of course their new home with a nomadic family. We're looking for adventurous camel lovers, people willing to work in a team and be flexible, and of course, willing to have the time of their lives. 
Trips like this will open your heart and mind and leave lasting impressions which you just cannot find anywhere else. To find out more about our 2019 Mongolian Camel Journey and to apply before applications close, visit camelconnection.com forward slash Mongolia.